Hey everybody, we are back with another review, and today we are checking out a 30-year-old retro title, one of my personal favorites, Dragon Warrior. So without further ado, let's hop right into the review. So we got um, a full complete box copy of Dragon Warrior for the Nintendo Entertainment System here, so we're going to check it out and see what's all in the box. Um, yeah, this one's actually in pretty good, decent shape. Uh, as you can see from the box, we have uh, just a little bit of wear marks here on the side, as you can see. But nothing too crazy. No splits, no tears in it, which is nice. Um, the front has real nice coloration. Look at that artwork. Now, this personal game, uh, for me, was one of the first games I actually played for the Nintendo, um, the NES console. So... Basically, I got a 12-month subscription of Nintendo Power and Dragon Warrior for free when I purchased the console originally. Well, I guess my parents purchased the console originally. Um, in, uh, I believe, 89. And, uh, yeah, the promotion that they were running for that uh, it enabled me to get this game for free. And I thought it was awesome that I ended up getting basically two games I got because I got Mario Duck Hunt and I ended up getting Dragon Warrior with it. So that was pretty cool. And I got 12 issues of Nintendo Power, which is really awesome, too. So... And yeah, check this out. You got, uh, there's some gameplay on the back here. We got a little bit of an explanation on the back of the box. Let's see what we got on the inside. Alright. Now this is complete, so we have everything in here. The sleeve didn't want to come out though for some reason. Packed tight. Got that classic plastic sleeve on there. I think we even have, yes we do, we have the foam insert in the bottom. All of you probably remember this. This is usually the first thing that goes in the trash can, um, which makes it the hardest to get uh, the an original foam insert. They You could get new ones and you could cut your own foam, but um, an original one looks has a spe specific look to it, it has these flattened um, balls here, which as you can see, the styrofoam balls are flattened like that, the way they burn it, or burnt it back in the day to cut it, so um, pretty cool to have that original part, which is pretty important. And uh, yeah, then you got the empty box, of course, tightly packed with everything that comes inside. You have your Dragon Warrior cartridge here with the slipcase. Now the artwork on the front of the label is really nice shape. Um, top of the cart, real nice. No writing on it. Nice pristine copy, back labels, sweet, no Sharpie markers, nobody wrote their name on it, which is probably the best part about it. Um, that was a thing back in the day, was to write your name on your NES cartridges, because we used to swap games uh, as kids, you know, everyone's borrowing each other's stuff, so uh, you keep your name on your games, because if you're borrowing multiple games from multiple people, you don't know who's, who's what, you know what I mean? So you want to make sure you CAD your games, that's what we had to do. So we got our Dragon Warrior pack-in poster, which looks like it has a little bit of a damage mark there. But look at that. Beautiful artwork there. There's the, was it the Edric sword and was it the Holy Water? You got the Edric helm and the shield and everything. That's the, the name of the armor, and I guess the guy that you're going after. His name's Edric. He's the first, uh, the first knight, I guess, you encounter in the game who helps you figure out exactly who you're trying to go after, which this is, this is the end boss right here uh, of the game. So the back of the poster that they packed in with this, this thing had massive amounts of packing material, as you can see. But the, the poster that came with it, the back of it had um, dungeon maps of everything, of every dungeon. Every time you go into the ground, basically, or go into the dark, this is a map of it right here, and it's all laid out. Now, normally this is all blacked out when you're actually in the game, and you're only seeing squares all around you, um, which is illuminated by the torch, basically. But for you to see the whole map is pretty cool. So without this, it definitely makes the game a little bit more difficult to navigate without having um, this map, especially you're talking 30 years ago. So it isn't like how it is now. Um, or you can go online and just talk to anybody and you guys can share information about stuff. Back in the day, if you didn't know what was going on in the game, if you had, didn't have a friend in the neighborhood that might have gotten past the part that, that you need help with, you had to call the Nintendo Power Hotline, which cost money. It was like 99 cents a minute. So it was crazy. So then you also have the Dragon Warrior Adventure Guide, which basically told you 
um, all the spells, where you get them at, best monsters that it's useful against, um, suggested armor, weapons, and shield combinations. It tells you the level, um, max, MP, and HP on them, direction of the adventure, so basically where in the adventure story you are, and it has it basically all the way down to the bottom, which is level 20, which uh, Charlock Castle, where you fight Dragonlord. Dragonlord is the end boss. Um, but at that point, you should have uh, Edric's sword, Edric's armor, the silver shield. Um, so that's all of, uh, I believe, yeah, you get all of his stuff towards the end there. But yeah, you can see the, the different uh, bosses and, and bad guys that you have to fight using that combination. Let's go into, we'll go to the second poster that we got here which is pretty cool. This one was a little bit more fragile than the other one. So this has the Dragon Warrior overall arching map. So this is the the actual map that you, you're you exploring and going through different sections of this as you progress through the game and level up because each section has um, different related difficult difficulty of animals that spawn in this in the zones that you're in. So if you if you journey outside of a zone that your level is adequate for, you basically um, encounter some animal, you know, creature that's going to basically just shit stop you. It's going to destroy you. So, uh, and that is also illustrated here on the back of the chart here. So when you first start off in the game, you're basically navigating around these light green and light pastel green. Um, areas and then the the pink and purple as you kind of progress through it kind of moves you through these color quadrants all the way till you work your way up to the center of the map which is where all the um, dark green bad guys are which are the big baddies as you can see they use the the type of you know, basically the villains or, or bad guys that you would encounter are basically the gatekeepers for the sections of the map so you don't basically explore areas that you shouldn't be too early but yeah and it also has a color key here which basically shows you um, exactly which types of um, baddies you're gonna basically experience and see so like basically this uh the light areas up top here the light green the light pastel greens and the lime green that's going to basically be just like slimes ghosts and drakes and then you got like the uh, dark green here, which leads you up to where Dragonlord Castle is, which is right where my finger's pointing at. You got Werewolf, Shadow Shadow Knights, Knights, Magic Wyvern, uh, Star Wyvern, and those are um, going to be your, your most powerful ones out of all the uh, bad guys in the game, which are going to be, there's going to be your, your row of them right here. And then you also have your Dragons, and then you have your Armored Knights, your Metal Scorpions. So some of these are pretty powerful, and a lot of these you'll you'll reach these inside the different dungeons and they draw near. That's basically how it, how it shows up. They'll just show up randomly. It's not a specific spot where they are. So I thought that was pretty cool that they included that map because it lets you know, like you can't basically journey outside of the area. Now, back in the day, you didn't have, again, you didn't have the types of games out that were like this. This type of game was a new game for, that era you know uh, role-playing games for itself over in america was not a big thing and we didn't really know how to navigate games like this where you know there's basically gatekeepers throughout it so it was nice they gave you a little bit of a hint i mean you're also trying to show a very elaborate game to you know an eight a nine or a ten year old and you want them to enjoy it obviously adults can enjoy this as well but their target market was you know very you know you know adolescent or young adult children so Having stuff like this, the supplemental material, really helped out a lot. And here's the instruction booklet. This is just a standard. This is what normally would be included with the cartridge, and that's it. But everything else is just bonus. Um, and there you go. You have the, the map, the ba very basic map there. You got some nice character illustrations there. And then it just kind of basically rolls through on how to play the game and the different um, aspects of it and the different items and everything. So that was pretty cool, too. And then on the back, it even has... Um, a little bit of a hint on de defeating the Dragon Lord. Look carefully at the windows, judge monster strengths, gather lots of information, and then um, all the FCC stuff. So there's the instruction manual, but this is actually the real key. This is the Explorer's Handbook, which is basically like a mini strategy guide for the game itself. And it basically walks you through each 
section if you're not familiar with it as well. And then it has getting started. So Tangle Castle. And that is um, basically a walkthrough right here. It basically tells you exactly um, what to do and, and how to progress forward, where things are. You know, there, that's a door. Upstairs, you know, those are treasure boxes. To get to those, you need to get a key. Um, you got a little bit of a notebook here where it gives you some hints and tips before leaving the castle. It even gives you some, you know, hints on which kind of items you want to get. And then a basic walkthrough of what you see as soon as you enter the large map. Now you can see right here, you start off, the first thing you see when you leave the uh, Tangle Castle is you see the actual end of the game, which is right here. That's the Dragon Lord's Castle, which is surrounded by that swamp. Um, but that's pretty cool too. I always thought that was neat that when you start the game off, that's literally where you can see the where you're going to end off. And to get to that point takes hours. Um, buying weapons and armor, visiting the tool shop, and then it even has some really nice... Uh, graphical designs here of the weapons and stuff that you could purchase because you actually don't physically see these items in the game. They're just text based. Um, as you can see right here, you know, bamboo pole, club, you know, saying bamboo pole, club. So you're seeing the visual representation of the items in the game actually in this book too, which is pretty cool. And it tells you how much each one of them costs. So if you wanted to save up, or if you're preparing to buy something, you can understand how much it's going to cost, so you could at least acquire that before you get to the next town. It even has a, your, all your armor in here laid out in graphical form, herbs, all the items you get to use, the shields, there's the fairy water, or holy water, which I referred to it earlier. Dragon scales, um, pretty cool. Keys, you definitely use a lot of those, and those are the different price points for the different... Um, Various stages through the game, how much the keys cost. You have some special items here. And these are items that you acquire throughout the game. Um, the tablet you get from Edric's dead body or you, after he dies. Um, you recover that. You got the Staff of Rain, a Ball of Light. That's yeah, pretty cool. You get these throughout the game and they all actually help you progress through um, the story. And then you have some cursed items that you can get. So if you equip cursed items, you're obviously... Um, you become cursed. So you got uh, the fighter's ring, another item you can gather, and then you have Edric's items, which are his sword, his armor, which has his seal on it, and then uh, here's some explanations. If you get cursed, cursed items and you equip them, um, then you got Edric's cave, level one. It just kind of explains how everything is broken down, and just kind of goes through the beginning first few stages of everything that you need to kind of understand. And then it kind of goes basically through the entire game and it rolls everything out. Um, each town all the way up to, I believe, I don't, does it go all the way to the end? It might. Plateau. Let's see here. There's the ghost town. Town of Hawkins has been ravaged. Hawkins has been ravaged by the armies of the Dragon Lord. Let's see. Um, Erdrick's token. Here's where you get the rainbow drop. Dragon Lord's Castle. So it literally takes you through the entire game here. And here's the walkthrough of Dragon Lord's Castle. And it shows you um, what stairs go where and basically walks you directly to get you to Edric's sword and then face the Dragon Lord and then you fight him. And then we got a little bit of a saga back here, which is a the backstory and the, the narrative of what's going on in the Dragon Warrior Saga. And uh, you actually know them at, know this story as Dragon Quest because Dragon Quest was is what's called over um, overseas in Japan. But over here they named it Dragon Warrior for some reason. Didn't keep the Dragon Quest name, and um, most people don't even know that the Dragon Quest games that are out now were actually started off as Dragon Warrior over here in the U.S. So. Um, pretty interesting on that and then uh, yeah, it ends off with a nice little appendix here and then just some again extra um, Extra tips here that are offered as well Which are, is really awesome that they that they give you this Explorer's Handbook because this alone um, Doesn't really help you understand the world of what an RPG actually is Most people who know what an RPG is know because they grew up around having those um, types of games exposed to them but when you grew up having atari and then you moved on to a nintendo and you got something that goes you go from et on atari to 
Dragon Warrior on the Nintendo, it literally blows your mind, and you, you basically don't even know how to play it. So, um, one of my favorites from back in the day, and if you like Dragon Warrior, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more content like this, we do retro pickups uh, every Friday and uh, do reviews on them. And sometimes it's video games, sometimes it's vintage toys, so be on the lookout for that, and have a great rest of your day.